Is it working? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the library. My name is Sarah and I am your host and narrator. Well, we're just I'm just going to finish doing a few more quick checks to make sure that everything is up and running smoothly. I just decided at the last minute, you know what, I want everything to be a little bit higher so that I can fit things in underneath my raised platform. And uh, so a few things got scrolled around. So I'm just, excuse me, putting some finishing touches, making sure that I'm streaming everywhere, that everything is live the way it's supposed to, and it's not. So give it a second. Oh, and also it is very, very hot. Uh, where we are here so you will hear some outside noises as I have my window open um, to let any possible draft in and no I do not have a um, air conditioning in this room I've got a fan but it can only be so high before it interferes okay Looks like everything's good to go. Oh, let me check my crickets. We got kind of crickets. We kind of got crickets. Um, I hope everyone is well this evening. I thank you so much for joining me and for, I hope you enjoy these chap these next few chapters. I know that when I was putting them together, I was very excited. Um, I love lynching you. I love this character a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I am desperate for some fan art. So if anyone out there, if you're listening, I would love some fan art. I'm going to be tweeting about it later. My The scene that I most want to see people's reactions on are when Lin Ching Yu is kneeling down beside Luan Chang's wheelchair and it's the first snow and they're both kind of in wedding clothes but uh, Lu Wen Chang has already gone blind from his illness, so he can't see Lin Ching Yu, which was his final request, uh, which was Lu Wen Ching's final request of Lin Ching Yu. So I would love to see that moment. All right, I'm just signing in to all the places. Looks like we're good to go. Looks like everything's working. I can't help myself. No. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, okay, so let's do this and make sure that I've got everything. I don't know if you've noticed, but the music, as it, just as it goes down, um, the company Beacon, B-E-A-C-N, you will have heard me, um, grossing a little bit every time I, almost every time I turn on in that I was having some real difficulties with Beacon. Um, I have the Beacon mic and the Beacon Mix Create. And while I love the Beacon mic, I was having a lot of issues getting the Beacon Mix Create to work with my um, OBS. Now, the reason that I was having a problem is that I wanted to make specific um, playlists within OBS so that if we come out to up to a dramatic part I can switch over to dr a dramatic playlist and it's all royalty free music that I've already put together so in doing that I figured out how to make the playlist but then I couldn't get it to play and work within my uh, with my beacon mix create it just wasn't working and then and then a few days ago, I signed, last Monday even, I when I signed on to do our stream, I was like, oh, well, it looks like the, the mixer's working. And I didn't even think about it, but I didn't trust it either, so I didn't bother with it. Only to find out that when I was speaking to their customer service person, probably last month or so, um, they went ahead and actually took what the problem that I was having and fucking fixed it. I'm shocked. <laughs> like, when does that ever actually happen? Where you talk to a company, say, listen, I think I would, I'm trying to get it to work like this. Can you make this happen? Or is this feasible? Usually they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll look into it. And it never happens. And then all of a sudden I log on and it's working. So it's very, very exciting. Um, 
I think there's someone outside my door. Hold on just a tick. One second. Sorry about that. What that noise was that I had to stop for was that uh, we have two dogs in the house. We have my Yui here, of course, and then we have my mother's dog, Ellie. Well, Ellie is going through her first heat and Yui is unsnipped. So he's going bananas and we have to be very careful to make sure that they're separated at all times. He's whining right now because he wants to go out and be sniffing around, and you're not going to do that. Go lay down. Don't look at me like that. You go lay down. You got two, you got three cheese bones. Don't even. So, this, Jesus, all the interruptions. What is that now? Oh, it's to tell me that another streamer that I follow has gone live too. Well, that's interesting. Maybe if I get some people by the end of this and if they're still on, maybe we'll raid. My first raid was not a good experience at all. Hmm. And so I came up with the rule that I will not stream with under five people. And I don't care if you be lurkers or what, but Five people at least. Okay. I am so looking forward to today. What is that? Was this over too much? Oh. Ignore him. He is absolutely fine. Ignore him. I wonder if I can make that a little bit bigger. Goo foo Joe. Okay, I just want to make sure I am at the right spot, right? Xiao Cheng. Okay. Okay. So a quick update as to where we are. Luan Chang is dead. Um, uh, Lin Ching Yu has gotten a position within the Imperial Hospital as a 7th rank, I think is how you would say it, 7th grade or what have you. I don't know, they have not explained that, so I'm not sure what that actually entails. Um, we also have Zhao Cheng, the Crown Prince, after... Uh, Lin Ching Yu and da, 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 and oh Gu Fu Zhou, this person here Gu Fu Zhou, um, is the general. The general is the one that the <laughs> I can't even that Lin Ching Yu's father had to travel all that way with to a uh, Yang Yin Liang or something like that. Oh my goodness. You stop. You have... Eat your bones. Chew on your cheese bones. Grammy probably wanted to do some meditating together with her. You stop. Um, I don't even have like... I never discipline him, so he doesn't know. <laughs> That's not true. Um... Okay, so, uh, yeah, so Gufu Joe is that general who was poisoned 
And now we're getting, um, now the capital or the emperor, emperor is receiving all of these messages from Gufujo's camp or Gufujo himself saying, get me out of here. Um, also, just a reminder that Luan Chang told Lin Ching Yu that he would be back if he was able to reincarnate. He would, or not to reincarnate, but um, transmigrate again, because he's he supposed he supposed that he saved two lives in his last life, so he should get two lives in this one. Um, according to what he was told from the national teacher, I believe, and so he told Lin Ching lynching you that he will be back within a hundred days and that if he's not back within that hundred days to treat him as dead so i have edited these chapters and i'm so fucking excited to get to them because you really see lynching you who is this hard ass and he's got this this armor around him and he doesn't let people in he never lets anyone anyone in his entire life see his true self but he let luan cheng see the true him and luan cheng just fell in love <laughs> right so you have this guy who he reminds me very much of wen Qing from mo dao zixi reminds me very much of her like she's got this hard shell doesn't let anybody in except for her brother except for Wei Ying um and doesn't let anyone see Luan Luan Chang and Wen Qi, Wen Qing they don't let anyone see their real emotions and I don't think they even acknowledge to themselves that they feel these emotions so it's very awesome it's so nice to see them actually experiencing things uh yeah hmm. oh that's so good oh i was going like why is there no music on this because i didn't turn the music on i love that the music is working my only thing is, is I have to keep this up, turn these down, it should very much be in the background, um, but it needs to be loud enough so that you can still hear my crickets. Just in case, let's do a cricket check. Yes, yes, let's be crickets. Not super loud, but crickets. Actually, let me... Sorry, I'm just playing with my volume here. What does that sound like? Oh yes, that's better. Okay, let me just play. I've got two playlists already set up. I knew it. That's not really a sad song, but okay. Right, that's fine. Okay. Wait, what the hell song is this? This is like, I gotta get to it. This song doesn't fit. What song is this? I must delete it immediately. You stop. Okay, we won't be using that playlist. I guess. Okay. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yes, my love? You don't want to be in here, do you? What if I, if I give you one of your cheese bones and you go out, out and eat it at the front door? Would that be okay? We're going to try that. Because we cannot have him whining the entire time. So I'm going to mute my mic and I will be right back. Let me put him outside.
I love him more than anything in the world, but oh my goodness, he's a little high maintenance. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's get comfy. Oh, I should really... Yeah, no, this is gonna be just a sec. Uh, I should mute my mic, but I'm not. You get to hear my banging and clanging. Let me just... Uh, yeah, I have to go around for this. Why does my avatar do that when I'm... Oh, that's much better. Oh, shit. That's way better. I've been having some issues with being able to see the screen properly, and that's excellently done. Alrighty. One more sip of my drink. Now every time... Ooh, you could hear that fizz. <laughs> But now, every time I have my Diet Coke during my stream, I have, I think of um, Papa Mutt here on Twitch and him screaming at me. It doesn't count as hydration! <laughs> Maybe not, but it's delicious. <clears throat> I'm so excited. Let's jump into this. Chapter 4. Gufu Joe almost vomited blood. Ooh, it's so sudden. As early as when as early as when Gufu Joe's first resignation letter was sent to the capital. Oh good. The emperor and his confidants have been discussing the matter. They've been discussing for a long time. Some were of the opinion that since Gufu Zhou was commanding, has commanded the army for many years, and has won the hearts and minds of the soldiers, if things go on like this, the soldiers might grow to obey only military orders, and not the emperors. Since Gufu Zhou himself asked to return to the capital, releasing any military power he had, the emperor could simply follow his wishes and take the opportunity to take back the military power. It could be regarded as removing a hidden danger to the Deu. Another faction, headed by Xiao Cheng, oh, scoffed at such a statement. Now that the war in the southeast was at a stalemate, letting Gu Fu Zhou come back would only shake the hearts of the army and give the enemy an opportunity. Gufu Zhou was stationed in the south northwest border throughout the year. He has won countless victories. Just his name was enough to deter part of the enemy. If Gufu Zhou was not in the northwest, the Xiexia army would definitely take the opportunity to attack the city and capture their stronghold. Let Zhao Mingwei protect it? Was he even capable of that? The Emperor had yet to make his imperial decision. Gufu Zhou's resignation letters went from, e went from every five days to every three. In recent days, it came almost daily. At the same time, Zhao Mingwei's impeachment request changed from one every five days to one every ten. He used to insist on impeachment, but he suddenly stopped. He even said in his report, Although the general is very lazy, nonetheless he is able to lead our army to score one victory after another. It was over. It was over. He no longer wishes to get to the bottom of this matter. While the messenger soldiers were desperately running between the capital and Yang Liang, the Xiexia army was not idle either. They attacked the city three times within the span of a month. Every day that went without the emperor's approval of his request 
was another day that Gu Fu Zhou was still the general of the Jiangxi army. Every day the enemy attacked, he would grumble and swear for a while. Then he would reluctantly get up out of bed, strategize in front of the sand table, and plan victory from a thousand miles away. What? The emperor asked why General Gu wouldn't go into battle himself to cut down their enemies? That was absolutely impossible. Let's put it this way. The Qingyan... The Qingyan Jiuzhou... Yeah. The Qingyan Jiuzhou spear bestowed by the emperor has long since been gathering dust in the corner. His steed, an extremely wear... Oh, God. Ferghana horse. I want to see what that looks like. <laughs> Point of fact. Fucking... Christ, I forget, I forget that it is. Copy that. Go over here. Let me pull up a tab so that y'all can see too. Whoops. Boom. And let me just bring this in here. So y'all can see. Sure. I don't want it to actually connect like that. Can you do it without connecting? Okay. No, you can't. Okay. It's worth a shot. Do, 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 do. If you see anything suspect on here, don't at me. I don't care. What the hell? Oh, Jesus, it was a statue. <laughs> I legitimately thought this was real. <laughs> I'm like, is it something from mythology? Oh, it's like Mulan's horse. Got you. Okay. Well, I hope that's not it. Okay. I'm just seeing a horse. <laughs> I need to get a horse. I can't ride a horse. A plus points from anyone who knows what that's from. Okay. I didn't realize that was all the way over. So yeah, so it's Mulan's horse. Okay, it's really fucking skinny. Okay, now we know. <laughs> Sorry. An extremely rare Furkana horse. He has overfed and allowed to grow fat. He's even dubbed it a very shameful nickname. Oh god, I so badly want to know this. I'm sorry. Why is my why am I blinking like that? The when the fact that Luan Chang sent off his birds when they passed, sent them off by singing the coffin dance meme. <laughs> and then asked why are my eyes doing that? And then asked <laughs> Lin Ching Yu to to teach it to the people who would do the procession of his coffin so that they could sing it too. <laughs> I'm going, oh my god, you're such a tr Why are my eyes doing that? Okay, just a sec. Just a sec. I've got a... What the hell is going on? It's also loud. Apologies. Okay, I've got to check on this real quick. My eyes... So I... I have an issue with my... It's all working, right? It's all there. I didn't change anything. Oh, jeez, I forgot that you guys could see anything that I'm doing here. Uh, but I had an issue with my rigor, and they refused to help. So... That was the whole thing. They said that uh, they had done as much as I had paid them for. <laughs> so yeah, um, if anyone's watching this, I am in the market for another rigger. <laughs> One who can actually redo this because the other rigger that I was working with, he, oh shit, will not give me the file back. So I did the art for my avatar, and it's in a PDF form, 
but he had to do a little bit extra and I legitimately mean a little bit extra he had to do a little bit extra uh in order for me to um be able to do this um in order to but he took stuff away and he changed stuff I should have a beauty mark right here and I don't you can see the places where he didn't actually fix the white mark down here um the all these squiggly lines I did all of this freehand that's why she looks so squiggly and uh, I, when it's your thing, you see the, all the imperfections, right? But anything, anywhere that you see it like squiggly, squiggly or ratchety, that's from me literally doing that and pulling it myself. And I do not at all have a um, art background, like zero art background. This was from me fiddling around in uh, Photoshop. Just figuring her out and her top and everything so I am even my eyes are janky you can see the spikiness because it was very hard to pull in here because I don't have a drawing pad I literally did it with my mouse um so yeah that's a whole different thing why is this music so loud get your ass down there hardly hear myself okay Let's go back over to this because we interrupted. Um, but yeah, um, if anyone out there is watching this and if you're a rigger, I could really use some help. There's some things that I really want to be able to do and can't. Um, there's some things that I don't like that my model does and doesn't do. Um, for instance, <laughs> just a lot of stuff. Um, she has only the ba most basic expressions. Uh, the rigger didn't even include the expressions that the mouth shapes that I had already sent him. It was a whole big thing, but yeah. Let me just take a drink. Mm. It's cold. <clears throat> So apparently some of these songs are louder than others. Okay, and I'd just like to stress and reiterate. We all know that uh, Luan Chang is this Gufu Joe now, right? We all agree. We all know that he's been transmigrated into Gufu Joe. Okay. Because it's just, it's all him all the time. <laughs> I really want to know what the horse's nickname is, though. I can just imagine. I, I so badly want to know. <laughs> what was puzzling was that Gufu Joe could lead them to win every time. And not only to win, but also to win beautifully. There was even one time that while Gufu Joe was commanding the city defenses, he dispatched a team of elite soldiers at the same time taking advantage of the enemy's all-out attack and launch a secret raid on the t and launch a secret raid on the town where the enemy stored their military provisions no one knew how the, how general gu knew that the enemy were storing their provisions in a small town less than a day's ride away in short halfway through the siege of the city news of the stolen provisions suddenly reached the enemy they couldn't advance could not. They couldn't advance, could not retreat. In the end, they lost their army after having given away a bride. Oh, yeah. This was the first time Gufu Joe took the initiative to attack after having been cured of the residual poison. Everyone thought that he had reverted back to his old personality. Their highly respected and noble General Gu who got up early in the morning and worked late into the night, was back. Who would have thought that Gu Fu Zhou, having worked hard for only a day after winning, threw down this statement, Let everyone rest for a couple of days and we'll discuss it afterwards, and then lay in bed for two days. The generals and military officers were confused, heartbroken, filled with bitterness, but they also couldn't help but be convinced. 
In any case, for the soldiers on the battlefield, the most important thing was to be able to win the battle and keep the number of their casualties and their wounded to a minimum. Only then did Zhao Mingwei write in his report, Forget it, forget it. We no longer wish for his impeachment. His Majesty also shouldn't look into this matter any longer. Who would have thought that Gu Fu Zhou would specially come looking for him after learning this, saying earnestly, You can't give up halfway, General Zhou. <laughs> Ninety Li is merely half of a hundred Li journey. You may be successful in your impeachment if you just send over another report. Zhao Ming Wei said, embarrassed, The general has led us to win so many times. Although the methods used are very different from before, what matters is that we won. We don't have any high requirements. Gu Fu Zhou looked at him reproachfully and said, Hate him. Hating iron for not becoming steel. You're hopeless. Don't you want to push me aside and take the position for yourself? Zhao Ming Wei let out a long sigh and cupped his hands before his chest in a... I want to say obstinance, but that's not that word. Obians? Obians? Oh, Google Sensei, what does this say? <clears throat> yeah, I'll do the horse one. Oh, that's why. That's composed. Obeisance. What a weird fucking word. Obeisance. Obeisance. Obedience. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Before cupping his hands to his chest in obeisance. Obeisance. Mm. Difference. I'll say that. General Gu is a person of outstanding ability and wisdom. I am ashamed of my inferiority. It is only right that you should remain in, as chief general. Gu Fu Zhou almost vomited blood. You can't do this to me. When the good news reached the capital, the emperor decisively rejected Gu Fu Zhou's resignation. <coughs> Don't be fooled by Gu. <coughs> Don't be fooled by Gu Fu Zhou's insistence that he no longer wanted to fight this war, that he wanted to go back to the capital to retire. If forced onto the battlefield, he would still win the battle for everyone to see. Such being the case, then let him continue to stay in Yongliang. The emperor also specially decreed that the Lin, Yon Pan, Lin Yan Pan should stay by his side to ensure that the general was safe. And while he was at it, he should look into the reason for the general's great change in temperament. Like this, while General Gu Fu Zhou quite reluctantly engaged in battle, he continued to request the emperor to let him resign. Half of the emperor's dragon table was filled with his resignation letters, Finally, the emperor had reached the end of his forbearance. He summoned all the ministers to the Qingjiang Hall to discuss the matter. Under the emperor's fury, everyone was silent. No one dared to touch this bone of contention. The emperor raised his eyebrows and said coldly, I have already refuted Gu Fu Zhou's case, and yet he still brings up the same thing again and again. Such arrogance! He must really think himself untouchable, even by Jen. Jen is a fancy way of saying himself? Okay. Grievances poured out in a torrent from the minister's hearts. The war in the Northwest was raging. During this critical moment, Gu Fu Zhou truly was nearly untouchable. However, who would dare to tell the truth to the Emperor? In the end, it was the crown prince who stood up. Xiao Chang picked up the scattered reports 
sorted them out, and put them back on the table. He said, Father, please calm down. I think that since Gufu Joe is still capable of bringing victory, it should be better for him to stay in Young Liang. This is the time one must make use of their people. One who can be used must naturally be used to his fullest ability. Sorry, I thought I heard whining at the door. The Emperor hit the table hard. With him distracted with thoughts of hurrying home, how is he to protect... How is he to protect the Northeast? Nah. How is he to protect the Northwest for me? Then wait until he really loses. It won't be too late by then to have him replaced. The ministers exchanged inscrutable glances. The Minister of War said, I do have a whining dog at the door. Just a moment. I'm not going to mute this mic so that you hear this, this ridiculousness. Get away from that door. I mean it now. Like, I'm serious. You need to stop. Go lay down. Go on. Go lay down. Really? As I said, our other dog is in heat, and he is crying at the door that she's behind. I'm, I apologize. You will just have to listen to him whining through it. That's just, it's just the way it is. There's nothing I can do to stop it. <sighs> now where the hell was I? Okay. The Minister of War said, If General Gu really is barred from returning, might he deliberately lose to the enemy? Xiao Chang smiled. If he deliberately loses the battle, abandons the city, and causes casualties among his soldiers, how could he still maintain any standing within the army? When that time comes, his majesty will take back military power from his hands. Who among the generals then would speak up for him? The emperor slowly sat down on the dragon chair. This is certainly one way. Furthermore, with how eager Gufu Zhou is to return to the capital, his reason must not be as simple as wanting to retire. Xiao Chang said, I beg my father, your majesty, to send the Tanji camp to investigate the reason. The emperor felt quite gratified. He rubbed his forehead and said, then I shall entrust this matter to the crown prince. Seeing this, Xiao Chang asked with concern, Is father feeling unwell? The emperor closed his eyes and said, It is of no problem, simply an old illness. Everyone said in unison, Wishing for his majesty to look after his health. The emperor waved his hand and motioned for them to withdraw. Xiao Chang walked out of the Qingjiang Palace and summoned Xu Yang. Xu Ying. He asked, Has father been suffering from headaches recently? Xu Ying said, 
quite. His Majesty is worried about the war in the Northwest. Then have Chu Jing. Then have Chu Xingji examine the Emperor's condition. Chu Ying said, This servant shall send someone to summon him immediately. Chu Jing. Chu Jing. Sorry. Chu Jingdi served as the assistant Panyan of the Imperial Hospital. He was 65 years old and was the most qualified in the entire Imperial Hospital. Despite this, he has occupied the post of assistant Panyan for a decade. Medicine, like poetry and swordsmanship, have different schools of thought. Chu Jing, Chu Jingdi, and Lin Pan. Sorry, Lin, I want to say Lin Panyan, but that's not it. Chu Jingdi and Lin Yanpan belong to different factions. Their political views have diverged for for a long time and it was unavoidable that he harbored some feelings of disapproval towards the other. Because of this reason, he didn't have any good feelings towards Lin Yanpan's son. After Lin Qingyu arrived at the Imperial Hospital, Hu Ji took him to meet his colleagues and seniors one by one. No matter what others thought of him, outwardly they were polite. Only Chu Jingdi said as soon as he came up, that's a crappy voice for him. Are you the yellow-mouthed child who came up with the prescription for the epidemic? Oh, what is the other version of that? Uh, not incorrigible. Starts with like incompetent, ignorant, something like that. A uh, a uh, worse one. Oh, good. Lin Qingyu said, "Yes." Chu Jingdi, stroking his beard, shook his head and sighed. Others, if they wish to join the Imperial Hospital, must go through decades of strenuous study, pass the highly selective Imperial Medical Office's exam, and then study at the Imperial Medical Office for at least three years. While you, the male wife of a recently deceased husband, relied on a prescription of questionable efficiency to bypass the exam and in and and enter the imperial hospital all before even reaching weak crown alas public morals are degenerating with every passing day he ji said these words of imperial physician shoes are wrong since ancient times our heroes have come from among the youth. When Lin Yan Pan himself joined the Imperial Hospital, he was too he too was only twenty years old. Moreover, Imperial Physician Lin's prescription is not of questionable efficiency. It has already proven to be to have a miraculous effect on the epidemic. Chu Jingdi sneered and said, Everything has to be progressed by step by step. The more miraculous the effect, the more you have to worry about its potential harm. I am simply afraid that even if Imperial Physician Lin's prescription does cure the epidemic, it might bring about a lot of causes for trouble to the patient. Then Ching Yu said, the premise for any cause of trouble to exist is that the patient be alive. <clears throat> oh, that was good. Oh, fuck, I love Jin Yu. <laughs> like a boss. The premise for any cause of trouble to exist is that the patient be alive. Chu Jingdi's face darkened. He was about to argue again when he was called by Xiao Xiongzi from the Qingjiang Palace. He Ji said, That's just how Imperial Physician Chu is. Please don't take it to heart. Lin Cheng Yu nodded. After all, he's been considered to 
consigned to the position of assistant Pagnon for ten years. I can understand. He has heard his father mention Chu Qingdi before. Father Lin recognized Chu Qingdi's medical skills and also believed that in terms of qualifications alone, Chu Qingdi should be Pan Yan, er, Yan Pan. However, ten years ago, Chu Jingdi was ordered to ensure that a flavored concubine would be able to deliver her child safely. The emperor had set, had but a few male heirs, and the woman he doted on was pregnant, and so great importance was placed on this unborn child. And yet, under Chu Jingdi's painstaking care, the favored concubine suffered an unexplainable miscarriage. Chu Jingdi was accused of breach of duty. No matter how brilliant his medical skills, he would only ever be assistant Yan Pan. Chu Qingdi's emotions were written all over his face. There was nothing to be concerned about. On the contrary, it was those colleagues who smiled at him on the surface, but hid their true intentions but hid their true intentions beneath who were beneath who were more worthy of Lin Ching Yu's attention. Lin Ching Yu was a newcomer, and this first day was quite leisurely. After his shift at the Imperial Hospital, he left the palace compound from, from the north gate and came to the Imperial Medical Office, heading straight to the library. It was late at night. The library building was empty, and there were two guards posted at the door. The emperor had granted Lin Ching Yu the right to enter and leave the imperial medical office freely. Even though it was past curfew, the guards still opened the door for Lin Ching Yu and handed over a lantern. If imperial physician Lin has any requests, please let us know. Lin Ching Yu pushed open the door and entered. Rows of two-story bookshelves appeared in front of him, appearing to stretch on endlessly. Rumor had it that it would take decades to read all the medical books in the Imperial Medical Office's library. Then Ching Yu held the lantern up. After walking around twice, he found several long-lost works from the previous dynasties. There was a locked iron door at the end of the library building, behind which should be the medical records of the royal family since the founding of the Deu. Opposite the library was the Thousand Herb Hall, where you could find any kind of exotic ingredients your heart desired. This was the Imperial Medical Office, the culmination of the world's medical study. Lin Ching Yu stayed in the library for two hours. It was already the fourth watch by the time he came out. He suddenly remembered that there was an ingredient for a prescription that he couldn't find anywhere in the capital, so he turned back and headed to the Thousand Herb Hall. As soon as he entered, though, as soon as he entered through the door, he saw a person in the hall walking towards him. This person couldn't be a student of the Imperial Medical Office. But looking at his calm pace... He didn't look like a thief, either. The man also spotted him and said solemnly, Who's there? Then Ching Yu only felt that this person's voice sounded somewhat familiar. He smelled the strong stench of blood and knew that the man was seriously injured. Im Imperial Physician Lin of the, Lim of the Imperial Hospital, Lin Ching Yu. The man's footsteps suddenly stopped. Lin Ching Yu raised the lantern and looked at him. The first thing he saw was the blood-stained black clothes and blood-stained blade. After seeing the man's face clearly, Lin Ching Yu's heart moved. It's you. I was going to say, excuse me one moment while I go put the prince here downstairs, but no, he's finally curled up and is quiet. I'll take it. Mm. Ah. The water is dripping all over me. <clears throat> ah. Oh, it's cold.
cold. <clears throat> Chapter 5 Odd Change and Even Change This blood-stained and seriously injured young man was none other than Xiao Cheng's personal shadow guard, Shen Hui Shi. Looking, cl taking a closer look, Lin Qing Yu found that Shen Hui Shi's injury was more serious than he expected. A knife wound on his chest that cut deep enough to see the flesh was mo was the most deadly. The wound was even faintly black. Aside from this, I wish I had different music for this. One moment. Do I have different music for this? Wrong thing. Uh, what would this be under? Would this be dramatic? Do I have any dramatic? I do have some dramatic. Okay, yeah, this would be under dramatic. Alright. Hold, hold, hold. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. Uh, oh, shoot. Let me just see what these are. These are, these are, these are, music. Let me try this. Oh, it is that. Okay. Uh, we're going to name this. Dramatic playlist. Okay. Go to dramatic. He's here. Shuffle volume. Sorry, let me just make sure that they're all working properly. Much better. <clears throat> See how good and quick that was? I'm very impressed. That song didn't work. Is that while I'm here? Let me see. Do I have a suspenseful playlist? <laughs> see, even the dramatic doesn't seem to. I've only got one song on my suspenseful playlist, and that could be irritating quickly, so let's not do that. <sighs> Taking a closer look, uh, uh, faintly black. Aside from this, there were various other large and small sword wounds. If an ordinary person were to be injured like this, they would have long passed out from excessive blood loss. That Shen Hui Shi could still stand in front of him as if nothing had happened. He had truly proven himself to have come from the Imperial family's secret guards. The Tian Yi camp. Tian Li camp. Tian Yi camp. Lin Qing Yu and this person have only met once. That was during Luan Cheng's funeral, when Shen Hui Shi placed the edge of his sword against his neck. Had anyone else treated him like this, they would have probably made it on the top of, to the top of his grudge list but Jiang had told him that the plain-looking shadow guard in front of him would be Xiao Chang's only weakness in the future. Hmm. For Shen Hui Shi to be injured like this, he must have gone to do work for his master. After getting injured, he must have come to the Imperial Medical Office to get Jing Chong. Chong. Jin Xiong medicine to help. Oh, that's a metal, metal one, right? To get medicine to stop the bleeding. His eyes stayed on Lin Qing Yu's face for a long time. Without saying a word, he covered the stab wound on his chest with his hands. He made to go around Lin Qing Yu's side and leave. Lin Qing Yu said, 
one or more applications of Jin Xiong medicine might not be enough to fix the Imperial bodyguard Shen's injury. Shen Hui Shi pur pursed his lips and said, uh, what was my voice for this one? I won't trouble Imperial Physician Lin to trouble himself over this matter. To heal to to heal wounded and to rescue the dying is the duty of every doctor. It is best that you get rid of the poison now, while it has yet to penetrate too deep. Otherwise the poison will enter your heart and won't be able and you won't be able to practice your martial arts. How can you continue to serve the Crown Prince then? Hearing this last statement, Shen Hui Shi's expression softened. Then Qing Yu said, You've been poisoned with the five evils powder from the western regions. I happen to know how to dispel it. Would you like me to give it a try? Shen Hui Shi knew that no matter how powerful his martial arts, he was still just a man. Holding on for this long, he was he was an arrow at the end of its flight. If he were to reject Lin Qing Yu's offer, he might not be able to return to the Eastern Palace with a clear mind. After weighing his options again and again, he finally said, Thank you, Imperial Physician Lin. Lamps lit up the corner of the Thousand Herb Hall. Shen Hui Shi took off his shirt, revealing his whole riddled chest and back. The entire surface was covered in new wounds and old scars. It was a sight too horrible to endure. During his study travels, Lin Qing Yu had also treated injuries for people of the Jing Yang... Huh. Jiang Hu. Most martial arts practitioners had a bunch of large and small injuries. But compared to those martial artists, Shen Hui Shi's condition was far worse. It could be assumed that he'd been working himself to the bone for his master. If Xiao Chang was going to fall in love with him, how could he be so willing to let him suffer so much? Perhaps it is... <sighs> Perhaps it is as Jang had said. Scumbags always disdain those who go through fire and water for them but long for those who regard them as beneath their notice. Yeah, that sounds like... I'm really, really sorry, everyone. Give me a few moments, literally just a few moments, to take him downstairs and make it so that he, he can't do this anymore. One second. Really, really sorry.
All right, sorry about that. Let me catch my breath. He's running up and down stairs. Okay. Whew. Yeah, the joys of recording live, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Lin Ching Yu cleaned up Shen Hui Shi's wounds and applied the antidote. It will hurt a little. Shen Hui Shi shook his head. This pain was nothing to him at all. <sighs> Lin Ching Yu's jade like face was right in front of his eyes. The teardrop mole at the corner of his eyes looked particularly moving under the candlelight. Noticing of his gaze, Lin Ching Yu raised his eyes. What are you looking at me for? Imperial physician Lin is as graceful as the moon, a person of matchless beauty. No wonder. Shen Hui Shi's voice was very soft, showing a look of envy and inferiority. No wonder his highness keeps thinking of you. Sorry, let me get my breath turned around. Damn it, nope. Again. Does that do it? Kind of. <clears throat> Lynching you stopped the movements of his hands and looked at him. Then, with your face, why does the crown prince favor you? That Xiao Chang was dissolute was quite true, but he either liked people who looked like Jing Chen, or he bestowed his favor among those with real beauty. Shen Hui Shi's appearance at first glance looked very ordinary. After scrutinizing it for a long time, it still looked ordinary. The most that could be said was that he looked very heroic. Shen Hui Shi was momentarily stunned. How do you... How do I know? Lin Ching Yu glanced at the ambiguous marks on Shen Hui Shi's collarbone. Wounds and scars aren't the only marks on your body. Oh shit, he's just calling him out like that. Shen Hui Shi suddenly stood up, the look in his eyes turning vigilant. Imperial physician Lin and I are not, are, are not at all acquainted. How was it that Imperial physician Lin was able to call out my name last time in the Lin Nanan Hu's mansion? Lin Ching Yu sidestepped the question. I haven't finished applying the medicine yet. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. Fuck. Ugh. One moment.
There's no such thing as a reliable babysitter. <sighs> Knowing that Lin Qingyu didn't want to answer him, Shen Hui Shi said indifferently, I'll do it myself. Lin Ching Yu no longer forced himself to do it. He got up and stepped aside. Shen Hui Shi had some injuries on his back, and it would be extremely inconvenient for him to apply the medicine himself. Seeing that Shen Hui Shi was finding it difficult to move, Lin Ching Yu sneered and said, You have suffered quite a lot. And the crown prince? Maybe he's out there enjoying himself with someone else in his arms. Make sure, oh yeah, okay. When Shen Hui Shi heard these words, he froze. After a while, he said quietly, He is the crown prince. He can bestow his favor on whomever he so wishes, including you, Imperial Physician Lin. You can hide for now, but not forever. Then Jing Yu smiled. That's true. Shen Hui Shi only felt that the Imperial Physician Lin's smile was very confusing. It seemed to bemoan the state of the universe and pity the fate of mankind. It had an indescribable charm. It is probably this kind of beauty that could make the crown prince turn serious. Shen Hui Shi hastily finished applying the medicine. He thanked Lin Ching Yu again. It's late and the road is dark. Imperial Physician Lin, please take care on your way home. I shall be taking my leave. Lin Ching Yu said, Once the medicine loses its effect, come to the Imperial Hospital to find me. I'll change the medicine for you. No, Shen Hui Shi said. Shen Hui Shi knew. The fewer people who know about a shadow guard being injured, the better. Then I'll go to the Eastern Palace to find you. After Lin Chin Yu finished speaking, he leaned over and blew out the candle. The Thousand Herb Hall fell into darkness. Oh, excuse me. What? For the next succeeding days, Lin Ching Yu did not see Chu Chu Jing Di, Jing Di, yeah, Chu Jing Di, at the Imperial Hospital. The Emperor's headache had gotten worse, and it has reached the point where it wasn't even possible for him to attend court. Chu Jingdi personally attended to the emperor and remained on call in Qingzheng Hall. When He Ji was talking about this, Lin Qing Yu was pounding Lin Qing Yu was pounding medicine in a mortar. He was currently only a 7th rank medical officer. Rather than making patient visits, he spent most of his time making medicine in the Imperial Hospital. Lin Qing Yu asked does the emperor often get headaches? Hu Ji said, When the emperor is hard at work handling state affairs, it is not rare for him to get headaches. This time his headache is quite severe. He can't even look after the government's affairs. So he can only have the crown prince supervise the country. Lin Ching Yu put the pounding medicine into the medical box. I'll be leaving. Xiao Cheng was suspicious by nature, and the Eastern Palace was heavily guarded. 
Even though Lin Qingyu was wearing an official uniform and carrying a medicine box, showing at, showing at a glance that he was an imperial physician, he was still stopped by the guards of the Eastern Palace. We have received... We have received notice from His Highness... We haven't received any notice from His Highness regarding the arrival of an Imperial Physician. Imperial Physician and Lin, please turn back. Then Ching Yu said, I didn't come here to diagnose or treat His Highness. No matter who you are here for, you are not allowed to step even half a foot into the Eastern Palace without His Highness's express permission. Sure enough... Xiao Chang's defenses couldn't be compared to those idiots in Nan and Hu's mansion. Then Ching Yu was thinking about what to do next when he heard someone call him Imperial Physician Lin. With a few days of rest, Shen Huaixi's complexion looked much better than last time. When the two guards saw him, they cupped their hands in a salute and said, Shen Darren, Imperial Physician Lin is here for me. Shen Huixi said. I will take him to my room. With Shen Darren here, we, can't, we can rest assured, the guard said, making way for Lin Qingyu. It could be seen that Xiao Cheng did indeed treat Shen, Hui, Shen Huixi differently from others. Maybe he has yet to reach the point of like, but at the very least, he was trusted. Then Ching Yu followed Shen Hui Shi to a room in the back hall. Shen Hui Shi pushed open the door and said, Lin Xiaojin, please. The interior of the room is simple and clean, with no unnecessary objects, indicating that the owner of the house was of a serene disposition and rarely returns home. Shen Hui Shi poured Lin Ching Yu a cup of crude tea. I didn't expect that you would actually come. Why? Shen Hui Shi hesitated for a moment and said, No one cares about the injuries of a shadow guard. Then Ching Yu didn't care either. He approached Shen Hui Shi simply because he wanted his master's life. In that case, you can care about yourself. Then Ching Yu opened the med medicine box. Don't you always think about the crown prince and be kind to yourself as well? Don't always think about the crown prince and be kind to yourself as well. Shen Hui Shi lowered his eyes and said, But my life was given by the crown prince. His eyes happened to fall on the corner of the back of Lin Qing Yu's medicine box. His expression suddenly changed and he grabbed Lin Qing Yu's wrist in front of him. Why do you know the secret code to the Lin Why do you know the secret code of the Shen family? I need darker music than this. I don't have anything dark. Wait, 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 wait. No, I really don't. I need something darker than this. I apologize. I'll get better music. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lin Ching Yu frowned and said, Secret code? This! Actually, I'm going to turn the music off. Yeah. Lin Ching Yu frowned and said, Secret code? This! Shen Hui Shi pointed to the strange pattern carved in the corner of the medicine box, his voice trembling slightly. How do you know? Then Ching Yu was silent. He didn't know. The one who knew was that person. The one who knew was that person. So, this was the reason why that man gave him this medicine box? For Shen Hui Shi to recognize it? Then Ching Yu said calmly, Let go first. The two of them were immersed in their own thoughts, and they didn't notice the sound of footsteps outside the door getting closer and closer. They only heard the bang as the door was pushed open from the outside. Seeing their two hands, the man's eyes narrowed dangerously. 
It seems that I have come at an imp- inopportune time. Shen Hui Shi came back to his senses, knelt down, and saluted. Your Highness. Xiao Chang ignored him and let let him stay kneeling. Why is little Ching Yu here? Have you alone? I leave you alone and you send yourself to my door. But have you perhaps taken a wrong turn? Gu's bedchamber isn't here. Please remember that when he says Gu in this place, it's a way of saying himself. Kind of like a royal we. Then Ching Yu said, Since this official is an imp- imperial physician, naturally, I came to the imperial guard Shen's room to treat his injuries. Injuries? Xiao Chang finally looked directly at Shen Hui Shi. Are you injured? Shen Hui Shi lowered his head and said, It's but some minor injuries. It is due to the incompetence of the subordinate. You really are incompetent. Xiao Cheng turned the jade thumb ring on his hand. Such a little thing can actually injure you. What use does Gu have of you? And you still haven't withdrawn. Shen Hui Shi glanced at Lin Qing Yu. Lips trembling, he said, Your Highness, this is my room. Xiao Cheng stared at Lin Qing Yu's eyes and said with a smile, And Gu wishes to use your room to have little Qing Yu help me diagnose my pulse. Lin Qing Yu's hands, hidden in the sleeves of his official uniform, clenched into fists. He said lightly, Seeing your highness so leisurely, I presume there has been another great victory in the Northwest? Mentioning the Northwest, Xiao Cheng naturally thought of Gu Fu Zhou. He also remembered that the beauty in front of him was Gu Fu Zhou's adopted brother. A trace of unwillingness appeared in his eyes. Just as he was about to speak, a eunuch hurriedly came to report, Your Highness, an urgent matter has occurred from Yong Liang. All the ministers are waiting for you in the... Why does this get me? All of the ministers are waiting for you in the Qingjiang Palace. State affairs were important, and Xiao Cheng could tell which was more important. He finally glanced at Shen Hui Shi and said, You're on duty today. Come. After that, he walked away with a flick of his sleeve. Shen Hui Shi staggered to a stand. He gave Lin Qing Yu a complicated look and followed. The eunuch said, Imperial Physician Lin, please go back as well. Shen Hui Shi was right. He could escape for now, but not forever. Only once Xiao Cheng disappears forever could he feel completely relieved. Xiao Cheng walked into Qing Jiang Palace and waved his hand to do away with the minister's courtesies. What? Did Gu Fu Zhou send another resignation letter? To answer his highness, since his majesty told him he can come back once he is defeated, General Gu has not sent a resignation letter. The minister of war said, This time, he said in his report that he has intercepted a secret letter sent by the army of the Xingxia capital. Inside is a coded message. He suspects that it conceals Xixia military secrets. But no one in the Jingxi Jingxi army can understand it. General Gu wishes for His Majesty to publicize the message, to look for people of skill and ability within the capital to decipher this coded message for him. Now, there's this thing. Now there's this thing. Xiao Chang was suspicious. What is this coded message? Let's hear it. The minister of war cleared his throat and said solemnly, If odd, change. If even, 
remain the same. Mm. Yes. Yes. Get it, get it, get it. Uh, let me see here. So we started off in 44, right? 44, 45, 46, 44, 45, 46, 47. Yeah, that sounds about right. So this isn't the end. Okay, good. Hmm. I really need to come up with some darker, more suspenseful music. Because this is the dramatic music isn't doing it for me. Okay. Because I have interrupted you so many times, I'm just going to keep going. Let me just check one thing here. No, not even that. All right. I'm I'm just checking one or two things here. Give me just a just a tick, just a moment. You weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> okay. Um, what was I even fucking doing? Oh, yeah. No, I do remember what I was doing. I'm trying to find... Fuck it, Nooch. Oh, please be silenced. Oh, wait, I have... I have that. <laughs> I can do that. So, let me just go to... Uh, oh no, it's just us. Mostly just us. And the English. I don't even know what that is. Sorry, I'm just checking the reading fun page now to see how many people are on. And we're right at the top. So I'm, I'm pretty glad that we're at the top, but we're only at the top with one viewer. But we're one of the few English readers. In fact, majority of them are Portuguese. That's so interesting. Apparently reading's a big thing. Eh. And I feel so bad for the guy who's the person who's reading the Harry Potter. No, it's reading is always a good thing. It is a very good thing. I'm just so interested that there's only three English readers on here. And I feel so bad because I think I went to listen to the person who's doing the Harry Potter live stream. And I, I feel like it's um, either their audio was down or they kept getting silenced. I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure it's, it's very highly copyrighted. The whole Wizarding World fandom, JK, is a complete asshole when it comes to any kind of fan works or, um, I don't know if it counts as fan works, but you know what I mean. Um, you cannot use their name at all. Hi, by the way. So I was looking at, thank you so much for the follow. You followed for the first time a few days ago and I was trying to pronounce your name. So it's Kintran Valgri. Valgri. I don't know. I apologize. My apologies. So, yeah. Okay, so... Oh, I actually got it! Oh, cool! <laughs> Valgri. Okay. Excellent. I always get very excited when I pronounce people's names right. <laughs> it's a weird thing. So that makes me so happy. Kendra. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the follow and welcome as a first time chatter. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And da, 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 da. I don't know if you've been following along, but uh, we just found out that for sure General Gu is Lin Ching Yu or Luan Chang. And oh, I gotta, I'm not sure which chapter it is, but. There's an attempted assault, but no actual assault, on Lin Ching Yu. And I don't know if it's this chapter or the next. We're reading both, but I don't care if it's a spoiler. It's a, it's a trigger for me, so I just want to tell people straight out, 
Nothing actually happens. He's okay. Hmm. Deliciousness. Okay. I really do, sh do should get some better music for this, though. Now let's start hunting that down. <laughs> He's so salty about this. Chapter 46. Finally know his name. If odd change, if... Oh, wait, sorry. There you go. But often kill suspense. It does kill suspense. Absolutely it does. And I 100% agree. It, it absolutely kills suspense. But there's so much going on here that I, I'm like, there are, there's more sus suspenseful things going to come. But I feel like that's one less thing for people to get squeaked out by and, and run away. Okay. If odd change, if even remain the same. If odd change, if even remain the same. Xiao Chen silently repeated the so-called Xingxia co secret code. For a while, he absolutely didn't know what to make of it. It's been a while since you saw that, since you saw the report. <laughs> Xiao Qian said, Let's hear your ideas. The Prime Minister thought deeply. Odd and even are opposites. If odd change, but if even do not change. I think this may be alluding to the time when the Xie Xia army marches. On odd number days, they go. On even number days, they stop. The Minister of War carefully thought about it. The word change is particularly debatable. I think this may pertain to a change in the formation. The Xie Xia might use a changeable formation to attack our army. The Crown Prince's herald Harold muttered to himself, The theory of odd and even is often used in mathematics. Perhaps this sentence is alluding to a certain mathematical law? <laughs> the Assistant Minister of Revenue couldn't agree. He said doubtfully, What does mathematic lo mathematical law have to do with marching and fighting? They discussed for a long time. Every theory they came up with had some aspect of it that was a little far-fetched, and in the end, no one could fully convince the others. Xiao Chiang calmly watched the ministers arguing, and when they grew and when they grew quiet, he said unhurriedly, "Have you finished?" The prime minister respectfully asked, May I ask the crown prince for his opinion? Xiao Cheng slowly blew the stream steam from his teacup and said, Do you actually believe Gu Fu Zhou's claim that this is a coded message from the Xie Xia? Everyone looked at each other in dismay. Lying about the military situation was tantamount to deceiving the emperor, which was a serious crime. Given General Gu's personal conduct, how could he do such a thing? The Minister of War asked, sounding him out, What does your highness mean? Xiao Chiang put down the teacup. In the past three months, Gu Fu Zhou's temperament has changed greatly. His behavior and character has become questionable. A while ago, he was clamoring to return to the capital, and today he came up with an inexplicable Xie Xia coded message. Xiao Cheng, his eyes narrowed slightly. I wonder if this coded message has something to do with his reason for returning to the capital. Oh shit, he's actually smart. The Crown Prince's Herald said, now that His Highness mentioned it, this official also feels that there is something inappropriate with General Gu's request. 
if this message, if odd change, if even remain the same, really does conceal the Xinxia's secret military plans, how could we possibly publicize it? Even in the capital, the very stronghold of the emperor, there will inevitably be spies and from hostile countries. General Gu requesting us to do this. Is he not afraid of beating the grass and startling the snakes? General Gu is a warrior, after all. He is eager for victory. It is not surprising for him to commit some oversight, the Prime Minister said. His Highness, the battle in the Northwest is at a stalemate. I would rather believe in the validity of the coded message than not. This secret message still needs to be solved. Xiao Chang's lips hooked up in a sneer. Naturally, it shall be decoded. After all, Gu also wants to know just what Gu Fuzhou is trying to sell. But we won't be going about it the way that he wishes. Xiao Chang thought for a while and said, Publicizing it is out of the question. Go and find the scholars of the Imperial Academy and have them solve it in the side hall of Qingjing Palace. They shall remain there until they crack it. No one unrelated to this matter should know of this coded message. Do you all understand? The scholars of the Imperial Academy were all exceptional rare talents. If they couldn't figure it out, how could ordinary people possibly do it? The Minister of War praised his decision. His Highness is wise. Why is my ass? You might be smart, but mm-mm. Mm-mm. The next day, the Imperial Academy, located by the west gate of the palace compound, was deserted. Not a single scholar was to be seen, and except for they themselves, no one knew what they were up to. In the Imperial Hospital, standing opposite the Imperial Academy, it was business as usual. Most of the people who came to the Imperial Hospital to request the services of an Imperial physician were the maids and eunuchs of the various palaces. Just by looking at their clothes and bearing, you could already tell the status of their master in the palace. For example, a palace maid who came today, her clothes were not particularly resplendent, but she had a naturally poised bearing and a classy temperament. The eunuchs of the Imperial Hospital were also particularly friendly to her. It turned out that this person was Lu Yao, a maid from Feng Yi Palace. As soon as Lu Yao crossed the doorway of the Imperial Hospital, Chu Jingdi stood up. For Lu Yao, for Lu Yao Nanang, Yan Yinang, to come here, is Her Majesty feeling ill? Let me clear these away, and I'll head to Feng Yi Palace immediately. There is no need to trouble yourself, Imperial Physician Chu. Among the many Imperial Physicians on duty, Lu Yao instantly caught sight of the most eye-catching one. The Empress specifically requested for Imperial Physician Lin to check her pulse for her. Chu Jingdi's head whipped around to look at Lu Lin Qingyu. His beard shaking with anger, he said, Him? A seventh grade medical officer who has, who has just joined the Imperial Hospital? How could he possibly be qualified to look after the Empress's health? Lin Ching Yu cast a glance at Chu Jing, Jing Di and hoisted his medical box on his back. Mindless idiot. The Empress definitely wasn't looking for him to examine her pulse. If he guessed correctly, it should be for Lu Wan Chang. Lu Yao said indifferently, I do not know. Imperial Physician Lin, please follow me to Feng Yi Palace. Chu Jing Di stared at Lin Qing Yu's retreating back, his beard almost smoking from anger. Impotent junior! Lin Qing Yu arrived at Feng Yi Palace and said he paid his respects to the Empress. He knelt on the ground and was about to open the medicine box when he heard the Empress say, 
There is no need to bother. I wasn't looking for you today for that. You may rise. Lin Ching Yu stood up and the Empress looked him up and down. She said, gratified, You look good in this official uniform. Lin Ching Yu lowered his eyes and said, The Empress bestows undue praise. How are you doing in the Imperial Hospital? Everything is satisfactory. Thank you for your concern. I have seen Wen Chang's last will and testament. The Empress looked upset. Everything he wrote was about you. He earnestly begged me to return your freedom. How could I, as his aunt, refuse? Of course, you have proven yourself quite capable as well. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to join the Imperial Hospital. Lin Ching Yu didn't have much interest in talking with the Empress, so he merely stood and said nothing. The Empress sighed and si said, Wan Cheng, looking down in heaven, must feel very gratified to see how you are now. Forget it. This has been more than... It's been more than three months is, since Wan Cheng has left. Lin Ching Yu's eyelashes trembled slightly. Yes. In three more days, it will be a hundred days. I f fly so fast, the, em the Empress said sadly. I have ordered someone to light an ever-burning candle for Wan Chang in Cheng Sheng Temple. If you have time, go to the temple and light some incense for him. Then Ching Yu saluted and said, this official shall do as Her Majesty suggests. Two days later, Lin Ching Yu took Huan Tong to Cheng Sheng Temple, asking, taking advantage of his day off. It was April, and the world was full of fragrance. The peach blossoms of the mountain temple were beginning to bloom. With the passing of March, the long winter was finally over. This time last year was also the time when that person was most lively. Wan Chang's memorial template. template eh. <clears throat> Wan Chang's memorial ta tablet was enshrined in Chengjing Temple's side hall. Lin Ching Yu lit three sticks of incense, borrowing fire from the ever burning candle. He bowed three times, offering his prayers, and placed the incense sticks in front of the tablet. Imperial Physician Lin. Lin Ching Yu turned around and wasn't at all surprised to see a visitor. Imperial Guard Shen. Shen Hui Shi was still wearing that black outfit, a sword at his waist. When he wasn't beside Xiao Cheng or in the palace, he could certainly be regarded as having an imposing and impressive appearance. Imperial Physician Lin seems to have expected my arrival. I only guessed that you would come to me. However, I didn't know that you would come to Cheng Sheng Temple to find me today, Lin Ching Yu said calmly. It seems that Imper Imperial Guard Shen has been shadowing me. It... it wasn't my wish, Shen Hui Shi whispered. But it is inconvenient to talk in the palace. I can only look for opportunities outside. I'm sorry. He stepped to the ever-burning candle and looked at Luan Chang's tablet. He said, Imperial Physician Lin, was it difficult to overcome the pain of... Sorry, just a sec. I'm gonna make another one. Give me a sec. Okay, we need a sad playlist. Yes, yes, sad playlist. Give me a tick. I got my sad playlist all set. That one I know I've got. What the hell is that sound? Okay. Right. 
right, I said bring. Yes. No. I can't hear set. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, I forget these. I, there's lots of steps. There's multiple steps. I got sad playlist coming. Stay with me. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's fine. Okay. I'm here. I'm back. We're fine. We're, we're still here. Stay with me. All right. Uh, wait. Imperial Physician Lin. Was it? Difficult to overcome the pain of bereavement? It was all right. You just need to find something for yourself. Shen Hui Shi gave a distressed expression and said, If everyone were as open minded as Imperial Physician Lin, there wouldn't be so many pining lovers in the world. Then Ching Yu didn't have the patience to lament over the passing of spring and coming of autumn with Shen Hui Shi. You came to me because of the mark on my medicine box? Um, Shen Hui Shi nodded. That is the secret code that only the people of the Shen family's heavenly prison sect know of. But now I am the only one of the heavenly prison sect. Shen Hui Shi's Adam's apple bobbed up and down. How does Imperial Physician Lin know about it? Since this was all planned by Jiang, there was no need for him to hide it. I don't know. This medicine box was given to me by my deceased husband. Young Master Hu? How did he? Shen Hui Shi frowned and pondered for a moment. Imperial Physician Lin, where is that medicine box now? I... I pretty much carry it with me everywhere. It is in the carriage right now. Then Ching Yu asked Huan Tong to fetch the medicine box. Shen Hui Shi stroked that particular Shen Hui Shi stroked that peculiar mark with his fingers and asked Imperial Physician Lin, can I take it apart and have a look? You son of a bitch. No Son of a bitch. Then Ching Yu hesitated for a moment and said, Do as you please. The fuck you say? This is his last gift, you assholes! Shen Hui Shi carefully took out everything from the medicine box. After a few flashes from his sword, countless cracks appeared on the surface of the mahogany medicine box, and it burst open with a bang. Among the countless wooden chips... Something emerald green was revealed. Shen Hui Shi's breathing turned shaky, and he picked up the emerald green object. It was a jade plaque with the words Heavenly Prison engraved on one side. How could this be? Shen Hui Shi murmured in a low voice. When someone from the Heavenly Prison sect dies, their jade plaques are destroyed as well. Is there someone still alive? Lin Ching Yu said, There is a line of small characters on the back of the jade plaque. Looking at the nicks of the small characters, it must have been engraved recently. Shen Hui Shi turned it over and read it out loud. Xu Zhou Sui Cheng Lin Ching Yu seemed lost in thought. Xu Zhou Jiang, Jiang wanted to lead Shen Hui Shi to Zhuzhou, Shuzhou, to find the owner of this jade plaque? Then Qing Yu asked, Are you going? Shen Hui Shi didn't, didn't hesitate. Of course! Then Qing Yu whispered, You are a shadow guard of, with the impu- uh, You are a shadow guard with impressive martial arts abilities but your mind is as innocent as a child's. You trust my deceased husband so much. He was the type to be led by the nose by others. 
It was understandable how he can be so smitten and dead set on Xiao Cheng. Jiang probably knew this, and that was why he could do something like this. Shen Huixi's chest rose and fell violently. His eyes were slightly red. As long as there is a glimmer of hope, I will, definitely. When are you going to go? Then Ching Yu said. Will the crown prince let you? Shen Huixi's eyes revealed a sense of loss, but it was quickly replaced by determination. I will find a way. Heavenly Prison Sect. He had never heard of it before. Seeing the Shen Hui Shi's preoccupied appearance, now was not a good time to get to the bottom of the matter. If you think of a way, let me know, Lin Ching Yu said. I also wish to go to Zhuzhou to see the to see what my deceased husband was thinking. Shen Hui Shi held the jade plaque tightly and said, uh, said in a hoarse voice, All right. By the time Lin Ching Yu walked out of Cheng Sheng Temple, it was almost dusk. The setting sun colored the sky in tongues of flame. Soon, once it burns out, this day will be over. He was about to get into the carriage when a little monk stopped him. Patron Lin. Patron Lin. Lin Ching Yu remembered this little monk. The last time he came to Shang Jiang Temple with Jiang, it was this monk who invited the Jiang to see Xu Jianyan. Xu Jianyan. Then Ching Yu's heart moved and he asked, Is the national teacher looking for me? The national teacher is. The national teacher is still in retreat, and he cannot see anyone, the little monk said. But before he entered his retreat, he ordered me to hand something over to Patron Lin. After saying so, the little monk took out a little sil silk brocade bag from his bosom. Patron Lin, please. Lin Ching Yu took the bag and opened it. Inside was a note with ten characters written on it. The eight characters of one's birth and a name. This is... Looking at the familiar handwriting, Lin Ching Yu's eyes were a little dry from the wind. He had even just been laughing at Shen Hui Shi's loss of control over his emotions just now. Now, it was his hands that were shaking. On the 99th day after that person left, he finally knew his name. He didn't expect that constantly sleep-deprived salted fish to be named like this. Ooh, it's so good. My eyes are doing the weird blinky thing again. It's so good. I am, I am surprised by just how much I absolutely freaking love this story. Like, honest to goodness, I'm so surprised by how much I love this. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this what I think? It is. It is. I think it is. Is it? Um. Oh, it is. It is. Kintran, I'm a follower of yours. <laughs> My, I'm I'm using the re the restream and with the restream I can't necessarily see um it gives you it, uh, it has different chat options and so I have the chat option where I don't see the actual thing and then I saw your avatar I'm like wait a minute I know that one and I did aha yes no okay Okay. Okay. I'm I'm so loving the story. I'm surprised by how much I really enjoy this story. Um by how good it is. I should that that sounds really mean, but I'm surprised by how good it is considering this is not a story that I have read all the way through. Um 
this is not a story that I had recommended to me by anyone else. I don't even know if very many people know about this story, if any at all. Um, it does not have a big following. And usually I have found with Don May, if it doesn't have a big following, it's usually not as good. Just, that's anything. <gasps> Someone said love. What is this? I know I'd have problems with the name pronunciation. One of my followers gave me permission to read and record one of her books, Clover Payne. I stumble over the names all the time. The names are the absolute worst. Um, the names are really hard to do. The only way, I have zero Chinese background. The only way that I know how to pronounce things is I know that certain letter combinations have um, pronunciation rules. And that's the only way I can figure these things out. So I know that if I see a ZH, it's a J sound. <laughs> if I see a Q, and especially a QI, not always, but most of the time, it's a CH sound, like CHI. Honestly, there's, and the rest of it, <laughs> sorry, the rest of it is sounding it out. <laughs> so yeah, um, Clover Payne, one of her books. I don't know that one. I'd, I would definitely have to check out, check that out. Clover Payne. Um, yeah, but some of the characters share family names and be trying to energize reading it. I go all over the place. Yeah. I would hundred percent understand what you're talking about. It's, it's well, my first um I should say the books that I actually learned how to read on. Like I knew the basics, but I refused to read because I didn't find reading fun at all. This is back in grade school. And so the books that I learned to read on were the Harry Potter books. And that very quickly teaches you <laughs> some of these words be outright janky. <laughs> like these are made up words. So how do you pronounce these with the the lot I it's easier for me to remember the rules of pronunciation rather than the actual pronunciation. We're signing them out. Her opening chapter has a heist, so trying to pull through it are a challenge to get the mixed energy on it. Oh, I love me some action scenes. I love me some action scenes, but they're big—they're the biggest tongue twisters. Um, if the, if there's a weird name thrown in. Because, like, I completely understand what you mean. Like, you're in the heat of it, you're good, you're on a roll, and then a weird name, you're like, the fuck is... It's literally, there's a stone in your path. <laughs> and it's going to trip you up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have, I have that problem all the time with accents. Accents are... And finding the different voices. All of these... Well, I don't know why, but I choose... Of course, I choose the stories that it's an all-male fucking cast and I apologize for the swearing but it's an all-male cast and I have I'm like I think I've already used this voice <laughs> but for me like when I'm doing um especially like a Yuri on Ice read and all of a sudden I'm like we've got it's an action scene and there's you're describing all this technical stuff and the movement and then all of a sudden oh you have to switch to um a different accent you're like the fuck you say I just skip it Oh, but you can't do that live. That's been a challenge. Story she's when we read. I will absolutely check it out. Thank you. Yes, I'd absolutely very interested. Hmm. That's one thing I wouldn't mind looking more into is looking into uh, self-published works. Admittedly, there's one that I'd love to read. It was a self-published work, but I think it may be too far too risque and kind of give me the wrong audience on here. Um, but I may put it up on the podcast at some point. But to find ones that are like that, um, like your Clover Payne, or one of your followers gave it to you? Mm. Yes. I'd love to find some more stories like those. <sighs> okay. Okay. Okay, we did stretches, we hydrated, although <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you've ever been yelled at by Papa Mutt, who is also on here. Um, I absolutely loved his, tw his tweet. <laughs> 
<laughs> what is it? What is it? Oh, Americans call it soda, right? But pop and coffee do not count as hydration. Water. Water is the only hydration. I'm like, no, but Diet Coke is delicious. Hmm. Recording it off screen. So do you record it off screen or, or do you just do a pre-read? You don't do a cold reading. I think it's up now. I'm just trying to get through for a Japanese Oh my god. Yeah, cold reads take a lot of practice. But once you can get good at it, you can make money off of it, so that's something. <laughs> Audiobook narrators. We always do it cold reads. Yeah, that's the best way. I use, I started doing that with doing the, sorry, just a fly lip chap. Um, I started that by doing the, what is it? The export or whatever it is on Twitch. And then I discovered Restream and that's a game changer. So as I'm streaming now, it's also live streaming on YouTube. So I'm live streaming in two places at once. And then once I'm done here, it's already updated on YouTube. And then I just got to go over and and put the thumbnail and change the information a little bit. And it does it all for me. It's very quick. The only thing is, is that once you get affiliate status, which I'm not sure if I even want, actually want, uh, then you can't do that anymore. But so far, loving it. <laughs> Alrighty then. All right. Chapter 47. Let's do this. Once again, not sure if this has that scene, but if it does, I'll give fair warning beforehand to anyone watching this. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> Chapter 47. Symbol C Quadrant. Hmm. Back home, Lin Ching Yu went to the morning hall alone. There was only one person's tablet enshrined in the hall. He looked at the roughly carved characters Jiang Dixiong, Tang Hai, Tang Qin, Tang Shi, Yu. Now that C could be, uh, you'd have to ask the author, but C is sometimes pronounced like a T sound. So it could be Yu. Tu or you kui lu tui and then jin lu all within two sentences oh yeah those can get really tricky there's one on here there's the a palace word on here and it's a uh, ching ching jing palace and for some reason it trips me up every single time tang hoi tang chin tang shi you tui and jin lu all within two sentences mm-hmm those just uh I don't know if this helps it's just the way that I think about things the Chinese uh pronounce a sharpest I shouldn't say this not a generalized but in my experience uh the sounds for the mouth a uh, sharper town a uh, sound they say in the upper part like right behind the teeth and then by the end of the word it's in the back of the throat so tiang Hui. So it's almost like the sound moves from the back of the teeth to the throat. So your throat will be moving up and down. So Tiang Hui Tiang Qin Tiang Shi Yu Kui Yu Tui and Jin Lu. I don't know if that helps at all. That is just from, from my uh, from my uh, accent training and it, it always helps to know where in the mouth the sounds happen. I don't know if that helps. <clears throat> uh, he looked at the roughly carved characters of Jiang Dejong's, of Dang De, <laughs> as I say that, Jiang Dejong's, and stood there for a long time in a trance. You told Zhu Jujun. I totally jinxed myself. <laughs> You told Ju Jinyan, but you didn't tell me, Lin Ching Yu said softly. And you and you said you weren't a bastard. <laughs> the warm wind blew. No one answered him. There was a knock on the door. 
and Huan Tong said from outside, Young master, Master Zheng is here. Before Lin Jingyu headed out, he said to the tablet, But as long as you can come back on time, I won't scold you anymore. Oh, you're killing me. You're killing me. Oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. Zhang Xishan had been called by Lin Qingyu. He didn't know what Lin Qingyu wanted him for, calling him out on this night. So he first truthfully reported the situation to Nen and Hu. In just one short month, the Hu mansion had undergone earth-shaking changes. It was no longer dull and lifeless. And the reason for that? Pan Shi was expecting. This was something Lin Qingyu never thought possible. He had underestimated Nen and Hu. Despite being so devastated, he struggled to get up and find a way out for himself. Sorry, I thought that was going to be a euphemism. <laughs> After the doctor diagnosed Pan Shi as being with child, Ah, uh, mm -hmm, mm hmm Yes, doing doing the flip around is it'll it'll trip you up every time. That just takes practice. As no one can help you with that one. That's just practice. First four is supposed to be on it. I'm saying them. These. Oh, I guess I can look because you DM'd me this story, so I'll find out later. I'm wondering what kind of story. Because we, we read Don May over here. <laughs> That's why I ask. I was curious. <clears throat> After the di doctor diagnosed Pan Shi as being with child, it could be said that Master Hu's was ill. Master whose illness was cured without any need for medicine. Now there is no longer any need for him to be confined in bed. Soon he may be able to return to court. He may be of a mind to return to court, but there may no longer be a place for him there. After saying this, Lin Qing Yu returned to the original matter. During the few months you were in Xiongju, Aside from the investigating the matter of the private salt business, you also handled quite a few matters for young Master Hu, isn't that right? Zhang Xishan was momentarily stunned, and then he smiled bitterly. It seems there is nothing that can be hidden from young Master. Tell me. Zhang Xishan said, Young Master Hu asked me to find someone... In Xuxiang, in Juju, Ju he instructed me to find a way to obtain a certain token from him. Then Ching Yu asked, Who is this person? I only know that he is a butcher under the pseudonym Ju Yong Xin. As for this person's real identity and real name, I am afraid only young Master Hu knew. Then Ching Yu nodded and said, You've worked hard. Later, go to the warehouse and get some tonic and, and give to Pan Yanang. Then Ching... Oh, Jiang Shishan said, Yes, young master. The next day, when Lin Ching Yu woke up early in the morning, he felt as though his chest were empty, his heart missing. Hua Lu entered the room and saw Lin Ching Yu sitting up by the bed in a daze. She called out, Young master? Lin Ching Yu suddenly said, Today, let's go to the Lin residence. It may be that not everyone knew about him moving house. Okay, so you get this, right? <laughs> this is the hundredth day, so... Lu Wancheng said that he would be back by the hundredth day. And 
because Lin Ching Yu moved, he got his own place and he didn't move back in with his parents. He's thinking, well, maybe Lu and Chang didn't know that he moved, so I have to go back home and so that he knows where I am to find me. Oh my god! It's so exciting. I'm where's my sad music? I'm turning this shit up. Yep. <clears throat> When they arrived at the Lin residence, Lin Ching Yu accompanied Mother Lin for a meal and then set, spent the rest of the time in the study. Seeing that he was in a bad mood, Mother Lin stopped Lin Ching He, who wanted to stick to his brother. Your brother wants to be by himself. Lin Ching Yu sat alone from day till night until they began to light the lanterns. Huan Tong came in and reminded him, Young master, it's time for you to enter the palace. Tonight, Lin Ching Yu had to be on duty at the Imperial Hospital for six hours. Lin Ching Yu asked him, What time is it? Huan Tong replied, It's already Zixi. 7 to 9 p.m. <coughs> then and... <coughs> Then until Jishi, Zishi, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m., there is still... Then Ching Yu stopped talking. He calmed down and said, Help me change clothes. The curtain of the night shrouded everything, and the palace gate was locked. Most of the imperial physicians on duty at the imperial hospital were the young ones with less seniority with only one or two of the older physicians in charge. Hu Ji was preparing medicine according to, the, to a prescription. He was unsure of the dosage for one of the medicines, so he raised his head and asked Lin Ching Yu beside him. Imperial Physician Lin, would it be better if this snowdrop brush was a little less... Imperial Physician Lin? Lin Ching Yu came back to his senses and said, What? Hu Ji put down the medicine and asked, What has been on your mind these days? It feels like you've been absent-minded. Lin Ching Yu rubbed the space between his brows. It's nothing. If something has happened, you must tell me, Hu Ji said sincerely. I can... Before Hu Ji could finish speaking, a panicked voice came from outside the hospital. My sad stuff. Imperial physician who? Imperial physician who? Here? The person who came in was the little eunuch in charge of sweeping Jing Jang Hall. Little Fu Zi. He came to the Imperial Hospital in the middle of the night because a eunuch who stayed in the same room with him suddenly fell ill, suffering from unbearable abdominal pain. They were eunuchs, and no one really cared when they got sick. Only Imperial Physician Hu would diagnose and treat them wholeheartedly. Imperial Physician Hu packed his things without another word. I'll go right away. Lin Ching Yu said, You still have to make those beauty pills for Concubine Chen. I'll go. Imperial Physician Hu said in surprise, You are willing to go? Lin Ching Yu nodded. He wanted something to do, and only when he was facing a patient could he find a moment of peace. Hu Ji was the only one little Fu Ji, Fu Ji trusted. He was a little uneasy when he heard this. Imperial, ph Imperial Physician Hu isn't coming? Hu Ji smiled and said, Don't worry. Imperial Physician Lin's medical skills are better than mine. With him there, there absolutely won't be any problem. Don't you know that Imperial Physician Lin was the one who came up with the cure for the epidemic? Little Fu Ji's eyes lit up. Really? Thank you, Imperial Physician Lin. Then Ching Yu said, Lead the way. Lin Ching Yu followed Xiao Fu Ji to Silijian, where the eunuchs lived. The imperial palace was grand and magnificent, 
But the other side of the stateliness and solemnity were these cramped rooms where seven to eight eunuchs were squeezed in. The room he arrived at could still be considered quite good. The eunuchs who served here were those who served in Chengjiang Hall. The people served around the... The people serving around the emperor had to at least be clean and odorless. Eunuchs assigned to do the most strenuous labors usually had a sour odor on their bodies. Changing my music because we don't need the sadness anymore. Let's go with this. Go with that. Okay. <clears throat> Lin Ching Yu diagnosed the sick eunuch as suffering from a stomach ache from having eaten something bad. Lin Ching Yu gave him something to induce vomiting, making him empty out the contents of his stomach. The patient should make a full recovery after drinking some stomach nourishing medicine for a few days. Little Fuji thanked him repeatedly. I'll send Imperial Dr. Lin back to the Imperial Hospital. Lin Ching Yu said, no need. But it's already Xixi, and it would be hard to make your way back in the dark. I spoke too soon. Where's... Oh, sorry. There you go, I spoke too soon. Then Ching Yu was stunned. It's already Xixi. Xiao Fuji said, Yes. The last piece in Lin Ching Yu's heart emptied. This day has finally passed. He still hadn't shown up. Rebirth from death. How rare was a soul transfer. Before that person, he had never even heard of such a thing. Experiencing it once was already unbelievable. How could he possibly be given it a second time? To die is to die. After death, there is nothing left. He actually believed that person's nonsense. So stupid. Lin Cheng Yu stared fixedly at one spot for a long time. He suddenly closed his eyes as though he could escape something by doing so. After that, he carried his brand new medicine box and said, I... I can make it back on my own. When he got to the door of the room, the eunuch who was sleeping on one side turned over in his sleep and muttered indistinctly, If I change, if even remain the same, if I change, if even... Lin Ching Yu stopped abruptly. He looked down in disbelief, staring at the handsome little eunuch. The little eunuch, completely unaware in his deep sleep, kept muttering that sentence. If I change, if even remain the same. Lin Ching Yu's pupils instantly shrank. I had to change music. <laughs> sure. Lin Ching Yu's pupils instantly shrank. His body grew numb from head to toe. Without a care for anything else, he grabbed the eunuch by the collar, pulling him up. The eunuch opened his eyes drowsily and looked at Lin Ching Yu blankly. Am I dreaming of immortals? Lin Ching Yu's mind went blank for a while. He instinctively uttered the words he'd been reciting countless times in his heart. For the symbol, look for the quadrant. The eunuch was even more at a loss. What? Lin Ching Yu had mixed feelings. For a while, he didn't know what to say. He looked down at the eunuch and said, voice trembling, You 
You realized your lifelong dream. He'd transferred in... He'd transmigrated to a eunuch? Becoming an actual Lao Gong? Here meaning eunuch, not husband. Imperial phys... Imperial physician Lin? Lin Fuzi wanted to hold him back, but felt that his hands were not worthy of touching such a beautiful imperial doctor. Imperial Physician Lin, this is Xiao Songxi from Qingzheng Hall. Is there something you need from him? Lin, Fing, nah, Lin Qing Yu was momentarily dazed, but his reason gradually returned. If that person was in the palace, he would have come to him long ago. It was more likely that Xiao Xiongxi knew this sentence because someone else had told him. Lin Qingyu's hand suddenly became restless, his expression cold. He said sharply, Where did you hear this sentence? Xiao Songxi was grabbed by the collar. He was almost out of breath. What? What sentence? Of odd change, if even remain the same. I don't know. I don't know anything. Xiao Songxi's face flushed. I just kept hearing it from the scholars in Qingjing Hall. They kept repeating this sentence from morning till night, like chanting scripture. Before I knew it, I'd memorized it too. Lin Qingyu slowly let go, his mind in a whirl. The surprise at having lost and then suddenly finding, and the perturbed feeling of not knowing the truth mingled in his mind. But now was not a time for surprise or apprehension. He needed to calm down and find out more information. Hu Ji has mentioned Xiao Songxi to him many times, and they've gotten a lot of information from him. According to Hu Ji, Xiao Songxi was simple-minded and knew how to repay gratitude. He was a very trustworthy person. If what Xiao Songxi said was true, how did the scholars of the Imperial Academy know this? Lin Qingyu's expression cleared up slightly. He asked, What else did you hear in Qingzheng Hall? Xiao Songxi said slowly, That's it. The door to the side hall of Qingzheng Hall is always kept closed, and no one can come out. I can go in because I have to deliver meals to them three times a day. Oh, yes, I also heard them mention Xie Xia a few times. Lin Qing Yu asked again, When did the scholars of the Imperial Academy get locked up in Qingzheng Hall? About three or five days ago? I don't even know what they're doing. Now that the emperor was seriously ill, the crown prince was in charge of the country. Xiao Qiang must have been the one who ordered all the scholars secluded in Qingzheng Hall. So, the source of the message was Xiao Qiang? How did Xiao Qiang also learn it from Xie Xia? In any case, that person was still alive. And... In any case... That person was still alive, and it was possible that he was in Xie Xia, or at the Deyu's border. The border between Xie Xia and the Deyu was in constant turmoil. Perhaps that person knew that he wouldn't be able to come back on time, so he made this unwise decision. He was still alive, but he couldn't come to him for a long time. Instead, he used God knows what method to pass on the code to the Deyu's court. This clearly meant that he either could not get away, or that he needed to conceal his identity. He let Xiao Qiang know this code, not for Qi Yu to respond, but to simply convey the fact that he was still alive through Xiao Qiang's mouth. That being the case, he mustn't expose it either. 
At least he couldn't respond. At least he couldn't respond to this secret message in front of Xiao Chang. Lin Jingyu pondered for a long time. His rapidly beating heart finally calmed down. He said to Xiao Shangxi, "I owe you a favor for this matter." Xiao Shangxi gave an embarrassed smile. Imperial Physician Lin is a friend of the Imperial Physician Hu. And you were always, and you were willing to come to where the eunuchs live to treat us. We don't know how to repay you except to reveal some irrelevant gossip. Lin Ching Yu suddenly felt it was good to be a good person occasionally. Oh, that's good. That's good. Nine and a half hours, or nine and a half, Jesus. Two and a half hours. I'm wondering if I should go for another one because I really, I really want to keep going. <laughs> but at the same time, if I keep going, I won't have more later because these chapters are still updating. So it'd be tough. Do I wait? Do I wait? Oh, I want to keep going. Okay. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here and show some restraint. And I don't know if I'll re uh, do another like ghost stream somewhere at some point along the way. I do have to get the chap two chapters out for my podcast this week. And I have to get, or not two chapters, two full episodes. So it's going to end up being three chapters. I usually just try to keep around two hours when I do. Yeah. So what I've, I've been averaging about four chapters so however long that takes four chapters because they're fairly short um or short by fan fiction standards i should say um so i usually keep try to keep about four chapters because the story that i'm reading um it has a really good translation already um currently updating the the translator does not want to be named uh but they're updating and they're up to chapter 58. Um, and if I go past that, then I have to start doing the better uh, translating. And I don't necessarily really want to. <laughs> it seems like a lot of work. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm going to end that there. Let's move over to... Do, 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 do. There we go. Yeah, I was pretty pleased with the music this time i have to okay i have to give another brief plug to the beacon company the new beacon um because i sent in how i wanted to be able to use their product and they actually took it and fixed it so that i can so it's super cool um and now it works awesomely, and I'm very freaking flippin' thrilled with it. So that's good. Um, yeah, so I will be streaming for sure next Monday. Um, whether or not I will get out any other streams this weekend, I don't know. This weekend's really up in the air. Um, but I will be having two episodes of SAF, my podcast series, audio fan fictions, will be going up this week instead of just the one, seeing as I last missed last week. And so I will have chapters one and two of um, uh, part four, I believe, of Joy in the Midst of These Things series, my Modao Zushi ongoing uh, series. And then I will also have chapter one of Changes, my uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer um, story, the second in the trilogy. So those will all be going up this week. Fingers crossed. Hopefully I don't shoot myself in the foot and over promise again. Also, uh, to anyone who's watching this at a later date, uh, if you, I will be having more things coming to this channel, both on the library. And I will also be st starting streaming on, uh, on SAF that will be also be hosted here on the library, but it will be posted on my Sarah's Audio Fan Fiction's YouTube page. So that's also going up all over the place. Um, but the SAF is for fan fiction 
and here at the library we are for anime, manga, and Don May. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Um, but if you want to be uh, alerted to that, uh, as to what's going on, you can follow me on Twitter because I will announce everything, but feel free to like, subscribe, shit, you can download, <laughs> you can like and subscribe and follow both here on the library, the library over on YouTube and SAF over on YouTube as well. And you can also find my Sayards audio fan fiction podcast everywhere, anywhere fan, uh, podcasts are found. I am listed. Uh, so Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Androids, all of all of the sites. It's all there. Um, also, you can visit my website, SaredsAudioFanfix.com, which is my personal website. It has links to both my podcast as well as a Let's Chat page where you can vote as to what our next fanfic should be. Um, the the votes keep rolling in and I would love to hear. I need a consensus. I've got two fics that are tied. I'm not going to tell you what they are um, as to what should come up after these two series are done, which we are almost very close to being done for both of them. So, holy goodness, that was a lot of announcements all at once. <laughs> all right. Uh, with all that out of the way, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I hope you will join me again next time where we continue on with chapters 48 with chapter 48. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you next time. Until then, happy listening. Good night, everyone.